church and our online family and friends, Jesus is real to me. Is he real to you? Think about that. Thank you so much for joining us on tonight. And we pray that you will click the share button to start a watch party with your family and friends. Our scripture tonight comes from 1 John 3, 1 through 2. 1 John 3, 1 through 2 from the NIV version. And it reads, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. We who have accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior, we have benefits, y'all. We are called the children of God. I am so glad that I am a child of the Most High King. Our song today is Jesus is Real to Me. And it says, real, real, Jesus is real to me. Oh yes, he gives me victory. So many people doubt him. I can't live without him. That is why I love him so. He's so real to me. Real, real, Jesus is real to me. Oh, yes, he gives me the victory. So many people die. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for another privilege, another chance, another opportunity to come this far. Lord, we thank you, Father God, that you have blessed us and kept us. We thank you, Father God, for wrapping your arms around us and bringing us this far. Lord, we ask you, Father God, to continue to watch over us as we study your word on tonight. Bless your word to fall on good soil. Bless us, Father God, that we will teach and that we will understand your word. And Lord, we ask you to keep the glory, all on and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, thank God. Yes, he does, he gives me victory. 
Yeah. I can't live without can't him. even live without him. He is. Jesus is real to me. He is real. He is real to me. Hallelujah. Thank God for another privilege, another chance, another opportunity to honor him on tonight through his word. God has blessed us again, has blessed us uh, to be a part of his word. And we thank you. Thank God. We thank God for who he is and what he's already done. We thank God for just blessing us and keeping us. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Let me call your attention again to Philemon, the book of Philemon. The book of Philemon is in the New Testament. It's right behind the book of Titus and right before the book of Hebrews. Philemon. Philemon, some may call it Philemon. Philemon. In Philemon, there's only one chapter. So when we call out a number in Philemon, we don't have to say chapter 1 because we only say chapter 1 when there's a chapter 2. But in Philemon, there's only one chapter and therefore, we need to understand that when we call out a number, we're talking about a verse. So Philemon, only one chapter. So we're going to be dealing with verses 4 through 7 on tonight. Philemon, verses 4 through 7. The book of Philemon. On last week, we covered on the great duress. We covered last week. Last week, we covered verses 1 through 3. I sort of review them on tonight because... Uh, electronics weren't doing us any favors on last week. But uh, we're in Philemon verses 4 through 7. The book is Philemon. There's only one chapter, so we say verses 4 through 7. Because there's no one chapter, there's no chapter 2, so there's no chapter 1. So uh, Philemon verses 4 through 7 is where we are on tonight. In the New Testament, the book is Philemon. So, Sir Davis, you would give me my phone if you don't if you don't need it now. Philemon, Philemon chapter, no chapter, Philemon verses, verses 4 through 7. Verses 4 through 7. Uh, the book of Philemon, a very small book that's situated right between uh, Titus and Hebrews. The book is written by Apostle Paul. He's joined by... Timothy, his brother, uh, not only is Timothy a brother of Paul, he's also uh, one of Paul's disciples. He's one of, of Paul's sons in the ministry. So uh, we want to make sure that we look deep into the word of Philemon, because as we go through this particular book, and we will be covering the whole book in probably in one month because it's so small. And when we look at this particular book, we need to understand and keep one thing in focus. And that is the fact that the Apostle Paul is writing a letter and he's asking a slave owner to forgive a slave. Matter of fact, he's asking a slave, slave owner to forgive a runaway slave. Uh, this slave name is Onesimus. Onesimus is a runaway slave. The Apostle Paul is locked up in prison. And because the Apostle Paul is locked up in prison, he is writing a letter to Philemon, his brother in the Lord, reminding him of how good God has been to him and how Paul has led him to Christ Jesus. And later on, we will find out that Paul is going to re relate to Philemon and tell him, now, look, you owe me your very life. <laughs> so let's look at it. Let's look at it. Uh, Paul, he classifies himself as a prisoner. He classifies himself as a prisoner of Jesus Christ and Timothy, our brother. So Paul is writing, and as he is writing, he classifies himself as a prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ. I said to you last week, if you are not a prisoner for the Lord Jesus Christ, you are a prisoner for something or somebody. If you are not a slave for the Lord Jesus Christ, you are a slave for something or somebody. So when we look at the book of Philemon, Paul does not introduce himself as an apostle, as he does so many times when he writes, but he introduces himself as a prisoner. He humbles himself. He puts himself on the same level as others. He puts himself on the same le level as prisoners. So the apostle Paul, he does not pull out his rank. 
He doesn't pull out his power. He doesn't pull out his title. Rather, he says, I'm a prisoner. Are you a prisoner? Now, first of all, Paul is a prisoner locked up in jail. He's a physical prisoner locked up in jail, but he's also a spiritual prisoner unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the reason why he's in jail is because of his preaching and teaching the word of God. There was a day, and there's a day coming soon, that men will not be able to adhere to sound doctrine. And the government will be on their side, as they were in Paul's day, where men were locked up. It will come a day when preachers will stand and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, as it has been before, when the government will support law enforcement locking prisoners up, locking preachers up, and making preachers prisoners, because they are not hearing and not hearing to the word of God. This is the situation here with the Apostle Paul. He has preached the word of God. He has been successful in preaching. Lives have been saved. Souls have come to Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul himself has been blessed by the Lord. And in the midst of being blessed by the Lord, he's blessing others in the Lord. What happens? He gets locked up in jail. People used to say, if you're locked up, if you go to jail, you did something wrong. <laughs> Let me tell you, Paul didn't do anything wrong. He did everything right. But when he was doing things wrong, as Saul, they didn't lock him up. But when he started doing things right as Paul, as the apostle Paul, as a Paul, as Paul that was called by God, as Paul the apostle, apostle who saw Jesus Christ himself, out of due season, he says, then folk locked him up. Let me just tell you, you don't have to do anything wrong to get locked up. Yes. Matter of fact, you can do things right and get locked up. I oftentimes have this conversation with others and let them know, be careful. Be careful how you blame people who go to jail. Amen. Be careful how you blame people who get caught between a rock and a hard place. Be careful how you say, I knew he wasn't anything. I knew she wasn't anything. Be careful. I'm telling you to be careful because you don't know the whole story. The Apostle Paul said, I'm a prisoner. I'm locked up in jail because of what I've done. And it's not because I've done something wrong, but because I've done something right. If you're going to go to jail, make sure you go to jail for doing something right. <laughs> He's preaching the word of God. He's teaching the word of God. The, the law enforcement of that day didn't like that. They locked him up. So the Apostle Paul calls himself a prisoner. He calls himself a prisoner because he's locked up and he calls himself a prisoner of Jesus Christ because he's so devoted to Jesus Christ. We need men, women, boys, and girls these days to be devoted to Jesus Christ. And as we are more and more devoted to Jesus Christ, then people will, will persecute us and they may even prosecute us for Christ's sake. I don't mind, I don't mind, I don't mind if it's for Christ's sake. We have to make sure that we're in the right and not in the wrong. Yes. It has to be for Christ's sake. So when we look at the text, he says, and Timothy is with me. My brother Timothy, our brother Timothy. He's writing this, this letter to Philemon, and he's reminding Philemon that we got a, we got a, a brother in the Lord, a common brother in the Lord, his name is Timothy. See, because Philemon knows the reputation of Timothy as well as he, knowing the rep he knows the reputation of Paul. So Paul writes this letter, putting himself on a level of a prisoner. Let me tell you, if you're going to minister to some people, sometimes you're going to have to minister to people on their own level. And therefore, you're going to have to get down on their level. You, you can't be a big shot and minister to people. You have to get down on people's level 
and let people see you as they see themselves. Yeah. So Paul says, I'm getting down on the level that's below you. And sometimes you have to get below those people you minister to. Paul says, I'm getting down on your level and below your level. You're a brother of mine in Christ Jesus, but I want to remind you that you are the Lord. So he writes this letter to Philemon, who has a runaway prisoner named Onesimus, and he's trying to get Onesimus back in to good graces with Philemon. He says to Philemon, Philemon, my beloved friend and fellow laborer, to my, my uh, beloved Aphema, and also to Archippus, a fellow soldier, and to the, to the church in your house. So they were having church in this house mm -hmm. as they had throughout the world during that time. They're having church at, at Philemon's house. And it is believed by historians that Archippus was his son. And it's believed that Aphema was his wife. Mm -hmm. And because they had slave, it, slaves, everybody in the house had a responsibility for those slaves. And everybody in the house had a day-to-day -day chore. So here it is, the father, the son, and the mother who had responsibility. So Paul does not leave any stone unturned. Mm -hmm. He writes a letter to everybody in the house. And he writes a letter to the church that is meeting in Philemon's house. He writes a letter to the church. Let me tell you, if anybody going to be willing to forgive those who have done wrong, it ought to be the church. If anybody can put up with ex-offenders, it ought to be the church. If anybody who could, that can put up with those who've been on drugs, it ought to be the church. I said to the New Beginning Church a few times that in order for us to grow our church, what we need to do is go out there and get all the dope, dope dealers. Go out there and get all the prostitutes. Go out there and get all the homosexuals. Go out there and get, get all the lesbians. Go out there and get all the, the burglars and bring them to the church house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to be wise in our approach, but the fact of the matter is, if anybody going to be forgiving on planet Earth, the church has to set the standard. The church has to set the example. So Paul calls on Philemon to be forgiving. He, he approaches the whole household to be forgiving, and he approaches the church that meets in that house. It says grace to you and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ in verse number three. He says grace to you, peace to you, grace to you. This is favor. This is a gift. This is, this is liberation. This word grace is a gift. It is pleasure. It is liberation. It is, it is acceptance. Grace is a gift. We don't buy grace. We don't uh, deserve grace. God has given us a gift of grace. Yes. Hallelujah. He says grace to you. Not only does he say, say grace, he uses another term, which is peace. Peace is prosperity. He bids him well. He bids him quietness. He bids, bids him oneness. So he says, first of all, favor. Grace is favor. Secondly, he says, peace unto you. He says, quietness, rest, and oneness. Look how Paul approaches Philemon. He approaches him in an humble way. There's an indication here that we ought to know and we ought to learn how to approach people. We ought, first of all, learn how to approach them with favor and with peace. Secondly, he approaches, them, approaches him in the name of the Father. He says, for grace of our Father, peace from our Father. Father God, our God, our Father. Peace and grace from our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. In other words, I come in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. 
I come under the leadership of God. I, I come under the direction of God. I'm telling you grace and peace because God has given me grace and peace. Yes. And let me tell you, we ought not be so easy to condemn people because God has given us grace and peace. Therefore, we ought to grant others grace and peace. Amen. Too often we get a dime over a dollar and we think we got it all going on. Too often we get saved and we, we've been in church for a moment and we don't do any wrong anymore and we forget what God has done for us. Paul says, I only who I am because of God's grace and because of, of God's peace, tranquility in me. And let me tell you today, you're only who God, who you are in God because of who God is and what God has done for you. Amen. Grace and peace to you, my sister. Grace and peace to you, my brother. We are to offer favor from the Lord. Grace and peace. So today we deal with verses 4 through 7 in Philemon. He says, I thank God for you. He says, I thank my God, making mention of you always in my prayers. He says, I'm praying for you. In my prayers, I'm thanking God for you, Philemon, because of your reputation. He goes on to say that I thank God for you. I thank God for you because you're my brother. He goes on to say, I thank my God, I thank my God making mention of you in my prayers. He said, Philemon, I, not only do I thank God for you, I call your name out in prayer. Amen. We ought to be calling our folks' name in, in our prayers. We ought to call them by name. Don't say that, brother, Lord, you know. Yeah, God knows, but you ought to call their name. Amen. He says, I thank God for you, I I thank God for you to the extent that I make mention, I'm making mention of your name, I'm making mentions of you, I'm making mention of mention of you always continually. I'm making mention of you continually in my prayers. You ought to set aside some time in your prayer life to make mention of other folk in your prayer. Somebody other than your family, somebody other than you, somebody other than your friends, you ought to call somebody's name out in your prayers. You have family members. Yes, you ought to pray for them. Some of our family members need our prayers. We have friends. Yes, we ought to pray for them. Many of our friends need our prayers. Right now, they need our prayers. But there ought to be somebody that you're not close to, that you hear something about, that you ought to lift in prayer. Yes, we ought to lift in prayer. Right, let me just give you a clue here. Driving down the street all the time, you see accidents. You see cars on the side of the road. You see cars in ditches. You see two, three, four car pileups. As you drive by, you ought to ask the Lord to bless this situation. Amen. Bless those involved. Bless those that it will affect. Thank you for saving lives. Call out the names. Lord, that person that just had an accident, Lord, bless them in the name of yes, Jesus. Amen. We ought to be calling out people's names, and if we don't know their names, we ought to call them out in our prayers. Thank God for them, Paul says. He's thanking God for him. And he's mentioning him consistently, always in his prayers. In other words, I'm, I'm mentioning you. I'm calling out your name. I'm, I'm talking to God about you. You have to get to a point in your prayer life where you talk to God about other, body, other people other than yourself. Yes. yes, you ought to pray your household is blessed, but you ought to call out somebody's household other than your household. Ask God to bless. And Jesus says you ought to pray for your enemies. Yes. Bless those who curse you. Bless those and speak well of those and pray for those who despitefully use you. <laughs> if 
If we're really acting like Christians, we ought to be Christ-like. We ought to pray even for our enemies. Look at verse number five. He says, hearing of your love and faith which you have toward the Lord Jesus and toward all the saints. Mm -hmm. He says, I'm, I'm praying for you, first of all, because you're my brother. And I'm praying for you and I'm calling out your name in prayer. And he says, I'm praying for you in such a way that I'm making sure that I pray for you because I've heard about you. Yes, Lord. He has a reputation. Philemon, Philemon has a reputation. And Paul has heard about Philemon's reputation. Hearing of your love and faith, which you have toward the Lord Jesus. Somebody ought to know you have love and faith Amen. toward Jesus Christ. Amen. Somebody ought to know that you love the Lord Jesus Christ because you demonstrate it in your personality. Yes. You demonstrate it in your countenance. Somebody ought to know that, that you are in love with Jesus. And I'm not talking about walking around not being able to hold a decent conversation because you, you, Jesus, 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 Jesus. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about your lifestyle ought to demonstrate your love for Jesus Christ. Paul says to Philemon, I've heard about you. I've heard about your love and your faith, which you have toward the Lord Jesus Christ. And I've heard about your love and your faith that you have toward the saints of God. We ought to love each other. We ought to love each other. We ought to have so much love for each other. Back in Mississippi, they say that, that we have love that flows from heart to heart and breast to breast. We ought to have love for each other. We ought to have love in such a way for each other that other folk can hear about our love. And other folk can see our love. This type of love is brotherly love. It's a, a love of endearment. It's a love of affection, but it's a love of benevolence. You may, see, you may know somebody or see somebody going through, and you ought to show love for them. Yes. It's brotherly love. It's, it's love. And this love is not the type of love you give somebody just to get something back. It is, it is love, it is it's deeply rooted brotherly love, love that you share towards your brothers and sisters on a regular basis. He said, Philemon, I've heard about it. I've been hearing of your love and your faith. And then he says, your faith in Jesus Christ. Yeah. We ought to have such faith in Jesus Christ that we believe that Jesus can do anything. We ought to have so much faith in Jesus Christ until we believe that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. We ought to have so much love in Jesus Christ until we have conviction. This word belief, this word uh, faith means our belief, our assurance. It, it, is, it is an extension of, of ourselves. It is our conviction that what we read is true. Let me just share with you, my faith in Jesus Christ is of such now that it doesn't matter what other religion come along, comes along. Regardless of which religion comes along, let me just share with you, I'm going to keep trusting Jesus. What Jesus says in his book, I believe it. What the word of God says, I believe it. And it does not matter what happens from this, po this point on, this word faith means I'm on the persuasion of Jesus Christ. Yes, I have faith in him. I'm dependent on him. I am going to believe on him. I have assurance in Jesus Christ. My, my belief in my strong conviction is in Jesus and Jesus alone. I believe that if I'm, if I'm going to go to heaven when I die, I got to trust Jesus. Jesus is the only way. Jesus is the only way. We got to trust him. Amen. We must trust him. We rely upon Jesus Christ for our salvation. This, this, word, this word faith, when we're talking about Jesus, who do you rely on? Who do you call? 
that we have to be relying on Jesus Christ for our salvation. We got to rely on Jesus Christ for our prosperity. Yes, Lord. We got to rely on Jesus Christ. You can't depend on your job for your prosperity. Jesus Christ is our source. Our job is our resource. You can't depend on a resource because all it takes is one turn of the valve and your resource is shut off. Mm -hmm. Pink slips are being passed out every day. You can't depend. You can't depend on your 401k, your 403b, your retirement, your social security. You can't depend on any of it. It was just a few days ago that even Social Security that's been paid for by previous generations was threatened. Yes, you can't depend on it. As long as men are making decisions on your life and your lifestyle, you can't depend on it. But one person you can depend on, you can depend on Jesus. Yes, you got to put your faith in him. Amen. So Paul says here in verse number five, I've heard about your faith in Jesus Christ. And not only that, I've heard about your love and your faith in the saints of God. See, I've heard about it. I have heard about your love and your faith in the saints. The saints ought to believe in each other. The saints ought to have a connection with each other in such a way that, that we will be able to say when accusations are brought against one another, you will be willing and able to say, I don't know him in that way. You're not saying that I know he didn't do it, but you should be able to say, that's not the way I know him. You ought to be able to go to court and testify and say, I wasn't there, I didn't see it, but his character says he didn't do it. Yeah. You ought to have a love and faith in the saints of Jesus Christ. Then verse number six, he says, that the sharing of your faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Jesus Christ. That's a whole lot in verse number six. Verse number six, he says, that the sharing of your faith may become effective. We ought to be willing to share our faith. We ought to be willing to share our faith in such a way that we are persuaded that Jesus is the only way to heaven. Paul says here that I've heard of your love. I've heard of your peace. I've heard of your faith. And now he said, Philemon, you are one who evangelized for Jesus Christ. <laughs> he says, I have even heard of your sharing of your faith. You have been sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. As saints of God. We ought to be sharing God's good news. Amen. We ought to be telling people about the goodness of God. So your sharing of your faith may become effective. He's saying, I'm getting ready to ask you to do me a favor. <laughs> but before I ask you to do, do me a favor, I want to remind you of who you are. Yes. It's kind of like somebody coming up to you saying now, now I know you've been right before. Now I want to see if you're going to do the right thing now. He says that the sharing of your faith may become effective. Yes. We want to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, and we want to share our lifestyles in such a way that people see who we are Amen. and glorify the Father. Jesus says you, show, you don't light a candle and set it under a bush, but you sit it on the mountaintop. You sit it on a hill where it would give off light. What he's saying here is that we, we set a light where other folk can see us. In other words, if you're saved, other people need to see your light shining. You don't have to make it shine. The songwriter back home would say, you don't have to make it shine, just let it shine. Yes. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. All in my home, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Then a stanza comes in that says, I ain't going to make it shine. I'm just going to let it shine. 
all in my neighborhood, I'm going to let it shine. Yes. Paul is saying now, Philemon, you have let your light shine and you have witnessed. You've been sharing of your faith through your lifestyle and through words and deeds. You've been, you've been sharing your faith, but now this faith needs to become effective. Mm -hmm. Now the sharing of your faith will be seen to be effective based on what you do. Based on what you handle, based on how you handle it. You know, you can't you can't cuss everybody that cuss you. You shouldn't be cussing anybody. You, you can't fight everybody that fights you. You can't win every fight by fighting the fight. What you have to do is make sure that you handle everything in God's way. And the moment you decide you're going to handle it God's way, temptation occurs. God is sitting back watching and the devil is going to push you past your limit. But you have to get to a point in your life where you really, really, really let your light shine so it may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Paul wants him to acknowledge every good thing that Christ has placed in him. Let me tell you something. If you have some good in you, it's because Christ Jesus has put it there. Because there is nothing good in you under the sun. There is nothing good about you. You stink like others think when you don't take a bath. And it doesn't matter how saintly you are. When you don't shave and you don't wash your beard and wash your hair, you stink like everybody else regardless of how saved you are or how long you've been saved. Let me just say to you today, you have to acknowledge every good thing. And you have to acknowledge that which has been placed in you through Christ Jesus. Jesus has placed it in us. Paul reminds Philemon that it's, it is in Christ Jesus that you are who you are. The reason why he says that to us today is because he knows once we get a dose of Jesus, once we have changed, we have a tendency to look down on other people. Mm -hmm. Paul says you, you need to acknowledge the fact that who you are and every good thing that you do and the way you handle yourself is not because you are so holy, but it's because of what Jesus does through you. Right. Verse 7, and I'll leave you alone. It says, for we have great joy and consolation in your love. Because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed by you, brother. Paul, Paul discusses with us today that, 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 that he has great joy. Great joy. He gets great pleasure. Not only does he get great pleasure, Timothy gets great pleasure. And we're going to find out later on in this book, not only does Timothy get great pleasure, not only does Paul get great pleasure, the saints of God get great pleasure when we handle things the right way. He says, I get great joy. I get great joy. And, and not only do I get great joy, I get great constellation. Constellation is, is comfort, is exaltation. Paul says you exalt other people. You you comfort other people. You, you give other people a, a tendency to move on and to drive on, to hang in there because of who you are. Paul says to him, he says, for we have great joy. We have great pleasure in you. We have great consolation in your love. Your love, your love gives us great comfort. We have comfort in you because of your love. Because your love for the brother, your love for the ministry, your love for the Lord, we, the saints of God, have confidence in you that you're going to be comforting to other people. Because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed by you, brother. The saints, the hearts of the saints, the saints have been refreshed by you. The, the hearts of the saints have been, have been blessed by you. The hearts of the saints have been put at ease. This word, this word refresh means have been put at ease. The 
hearts of the saints have been put at ease because of you. Are you putting people at ease? Are you blessing people by the way you handle yourself? Is your love exemplifying love? Is your attitude exemplifying love? One of the worst things a person can see is a, a saint of God that act like he just bitter about everything, complains about everything, everything that comes up, I, 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 I ain't got time for that. Paul says to Philemon that the saints of the Lord have hearts that have been encouraged by you. The question to you today, are you encouraging anybody? Are you exalting anybody? Are you building anybody up? Are you refreshing anybody? Is anybody being blessed because of you? Are people nerves put at rest because of you? Or are you just making people miserable? Paul calls Philemon and says to Philemon in this letter, he says, brother, you have great character. He says, you are my brother, meaning that we serve the same Lord, that you're saved by the same God I'm saved by. He not only calls him brother, but he reminds him that I'm going to offer grace and peace to you. I'm saying to you, man, I'm offering that pleasure of God, the favor of God. I, I'm offering the rest and the tranquility of God to you. He says, you've been such a great guy until I think about your offering. Not only do I think about you, I call out your name before the Lord. He says, I, I'm, I'm, I'm always mentioning you in my prayers because I've heard about your love. I've heard about your faith toward Jesus Christ first, and I've heard about your love and your faith toward the saints of God. He says, you have demonstrated your love and your faith in Jesus Christ by sharing the good news and your faith has been sharing the gospel. He said, but now I'm going to ask you to make it become effective. Your lifestyle that you have put on display, I want you to make sure you hold that where you have it. Let your light shine. Acknowledge every good thing which is in you that it came from Jesus Christ himself. For I have great joy. You have given me great joy. You have given others great joy. You've given your church the great joy. Are you giving great joy to your church or when they see you coming, they run the other way? Or they hate to see you coming? You have turned on the hearts of the people and you've turned on the hearts of the saints where you've elevated them. You exalted them. You have lift the saints of God. They've been refreshed because of you, my brother. It's very refreshed. They've been put at ease. They've been put at rest. My question to you today is, are you elevating people to, to happiness, to joy, to laughter? Or do they really hate to see you coming? You, you ought to be building men and women up. Regardless of what they have done, regardless of how you see them, whether you agree with them or not, you ought to be building people, lifting people, making people's lives better, not bitter. Amen. You ought to be building people up. Paul says to Philemon, Philemon, I know your character. Philemon, you're there for the saints, you're there for your church, you're there for the Lord. Are you faithful? My question, are you faithful? My question, mm -hmm. are, you, uh, are you one who exhort others? Do you build other people up? Or have you gotten tired of that? Have you stopped doing that? Do you find something wrong with everything and everybody? Build people up. Mm -hmm. In order to build people up, you need to be born again. You need to be mm -hmm. saved. You need to know Jesus in the departing of your sin. I give you that opportunity tonight. You can, you can get to know him tonight. You can trust him tonight. You can allow him to bless you tonight. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to get to know Jesus. Just as he is. Just as you are. 
The call tonight is for you to get to know Jesus, that Jesus the Christ will be a part of your life. The door is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to come to Jesus. Just as you are. Weary, wounded, sad. I guarantee you, you will find a resting place in Jesus Christ and he will make you glad. You can get to know him tonight. You just need to trust him. The first thing you need to trust is his death, burial, and resurrection. Believe that Jesus Christ was killed over 2,000 years ago by mean men. Believe that Jesus the Christ was murdered on a skull hill called Calvary. This is your moment. If you just believe the story that mean men killed him, mean men buried him. After they killed him, they buried him in a borrowed tomb. It was a borrowed tomb because he didn't need it too long. He borrowed, he borrowed Joseph's new tomb, a tomb that no man had ever laid in. If you believe the story that Jesus died for your sin, they laid him in a borrowed tomb. But early that third day morning, he rose from the dead. You can be saved right here, right now. The door is open. You don't have to wait on the sky to open up nor the earth to quake you can get to know him just as just as just as you are the door is open the door is open will you accept him today will you believe the story that over 2,000 years ago Jesus died for you and the only way for you to get to heaven is that he died and he rose from the dead. If you can believe that story today, would you just join me, repeat after me, and invite Jesus into your life? Just bow your head right now and repeat after me and invite Jesus in and you will qualify for heaven and Jesus will walk with you on earth. Will you join me tonight? Repeat after me, Lord Jesus. I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. I believe that you rose from the dead. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We believe if you prayed this prayer and honestly trusted Jesus to come into your life that you're now born again. We believe that when you die, you're on your way to heaven. And for others of you who are already saved and know that you're saved, but for some reason or the other, you are not walking the right way. You're not doing what God has called you to do. I want to pray with you and ask you to rededicate your life, recommit your life. Trust Jesus to be your Lord and your Savior. Father God, we pray for those who are listening. We pray that you make us whole. You, you bless us to renew our commitment to you. Bless us to recommit to you. Bless us to rededicate to you even right now. Lord, we ask you to forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for messing up. Forgive us for falling short. Forgive us for not doing the things that are pleasing in your sight. Bless us to trust you, Lord. Walk by faith. Bless us, Lord, that we would not walk by what we see, but trust you and what we don't see. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. There may be others of you who don't have a church home. Are you in between church homes? Or you've been mad with God and just fell out with church? I recommend the New Beginning Church where you can be a part 
of this family of faith and that God can bless you through this family of faith. If you want to be a part of this family of faith here at the New Beginning Church, inbox me and let me know and we will welcome you to your new home, the New Beginning Church. If you receive Christ as your personal savior or if you recommitted during this broadcast tonight, inbox me and let me know. We look forward to hearing from you and rejoicing with you. We believe that God has done great things and we believe that he's wanting to do greater things even through you. Thank you so much. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. We thank you for joining us here tonight at the New Beginning Church from our remote location. Thank you for being a part of our service. Now it is offering time. It is time to give to the Lord. I hear you clapping. Give to the Lord. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. Of course, you can still give by way of three means, but tonight I'm asking you to slowly, gently move away from Cash App to Zelle or the P.O. Box. Um, because of issues that we've been having with Cash App, I want to let you know we did not lose any money, but we've had some issues with Cash App. So we're moving, asking you to move to Zelle or mailing in your tithes and offering, or either go into your bank and let your bank do a regular draft check that mail and have them mail it to the P.O. Box where you can come, it can come through every two weeks, every week or whatever you may choose. Um, some people are doing it that way where they're going into their bank and having their bank to do a bill pay or whatever you may call it and having the bank to send it directly to our P.O. Box, 503 Missouri City, Texas, 77459. P.O. Box 503 Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. And as you make that transition, from Cash App. Cash App is still available to you at dollar sign NBC Souls. We just want to transition slowly from Cash App and, and once you make that transition, we'll know it because you've stopped giving to the to the Cash App. So please, ma'am, please, sir, go ahead and even give tonight your your tithes and your offering. You don't have to wait till Sunday. Uh, to Zell Lifting dot Jesus at Yahoo.com or P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Thank you for joining us for Bible study tonight. We're here every Wednesday night at 7.20 p.m. Every Wednesday night at 7.20 p.m. Please continue to join us for our Bible study. You can join us on Sunday morning for our Sunday school class. Our Sunday school is at 9 a.m. every Sunday. Please, ma'am, please, sir, please continue to join us. And also, you can join us for our high time in the Lord, our worship service at 1045 a.m. every Sunday. Thank you so much for joining us tonight and continue to, to walk with us and continue to, to bless us as we move forward in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for joining us here tonight. We are doing our, our daily Bible listening. Our, we are doing our daily Bible listening. Please, ma'am, please, sir. Continue with your daily Bible listening, your daily Bible listening and journaling. If you need to catch up, like I need to catch up, I need to catch up tonight. I need to catch up. I need to catch up. I said I need to catch up with my daily Bible listening. We're listening to the Bible and we're journaling the Bible. Don't get too far behind where you have to sit three, four hours to catch up. Come on, catch up tonight. Come on, catch up. Catch up with me. Catch up. Come on, I'm catching up myself. I'm catching up myself. Uh, David Bible listening and journaling. Go ahead and, and get on board listening to the Bible every day. The schedule is in the in the uh, in in on Facebook. I'm going to post it again tonight so you can get back on schedule. Also, we're in prayer on our prayer list. We're praying for uh, Nicholas Kincaid. We're praying for Nicholas Kincaid. We are lifting lifting Nicholas Kincaid up in prayer. 
We're praying for Sister Betty Haynes Perry, Sister Betty Haynes Perry, and we're praying for Gilbert. We're still praying for Gilbert. Gilbert Garza, we're praying for you, man. We're lifting you before the Lord. We're asking the Lord to bless you real good. A heap and a plenty. Please pray for Gilbert. We're looking forward to God doing a great thing in Gilbert's life. Keep praying for him. He's, he is, he is a, a child at our church, and we're lifting him before the Lord. We're asking the Lord to continue to bless him, as well as Sister Betty Haynes Perry and Nicholas Kincaid. Thank you so much for joining us in prayer for these who we've called out on tonight. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you now, Lord. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and grace. We thank you for this, your word. We thank you for blessing us through your word. We thank you, Father God, for the ability to forgive others, those who have wronged us, those who have misused us. We thank you, Lord, tonight. We ask you to bless us as a church, that we will always be a loving, forgiving church. Bless us as we move forward in the name of Jesus. Bless us not to judge others, not to condemn others, but to lift each other up, to build them up, to edify you, Jesus Christ, by lifting other men, women, boys, and girls. Lord, we ask you to bless us now and keep us. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him the only wise and only true God, unto him be power, glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us say threefold, amen, amen, and amen. We at the New Beginning Church, we are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, "In I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John chapter 12, verse 32. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.